Right, okay, so today we're going to talk about the first two articles, Article 1 and 2 of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. Uh, we've talked about the preamble and what the character is of, of this declaration. A little bit uh, before, the first five articles we're talking about um, <clears throat> really protecting people from being uh, manipulated through force or other means. Um, and then it goes on from 6 to 11, it talks about the law. Uh, and, it, and it tries to establish that the law mustn't be manipulated. I've got to remember tyrants may not say they want to uh, stifle protests and criticism they may say we accept it you're free to criticize and then after you've criticized they may manipulate the law so you don't get a fair trial or maybe you don't even know why you're charged or um, you know not even you're not you just disappear etc etc so the law must be protected um, and, and this, it must be established that that law is, is correct and, and able to protect uh, these rights. So Article 1 says all human beings are born free and equal in dignity and rights. They are endowed with reason and conscience and should act towards one another in a spirit of brotherhood. So first thing to notice is all human beings. So here is a reference to the universality of this, these, these rights. Um, it's, uh, all human beings means everyone on the planet Earth uh, have these rights. And then it, it does mention dignity before it even mentions rights. Remember, dignity means worth and value, and these rights are what protect that worth and that value. Um, then, why does it say born free? Born free and equal in dignity and rights. What does it mean by born? Uh, this was a period of decolonialization. Um, the United Nations wrote this Declaration of Human Rights uh, and uh, after the, the, the war, and also that one of the values of the United Nations is every nation is self-determined. So it's, you know, it's, it's not under the control of, of a bigger, more powerful nation just because it's weaker and so this reference to born is is demonstrating that you know you can't be controlled because you're born in, in a, a a country that's being controlled by a, a bigger country so the, the, that is expressing actually that that um principle so by born free and equal, we do mean uh, you know, every individual isn't just free and equal. Uh, it, it, even the state is independent and sovereign. Uh, so then it says they are endowed with reason and conscience. Why reason and conscience? Why is that mentioned? Got to remember in the Second World War, the SS officers um, often said after the war, "Ah, oh, I was just following orders." So they were trying to say they're not responsible. But we know that once you have reason and conscience, you are you are free uh, to do as you want um, in terms of morality. So you, you are responsible for what your actions are, morally, morally. Um, so, you know, um, Eric Fromm talked about this 
freedom and the fact that uh, once you're free, uh, being free means you can choose. You've got different options and you can choose. And when, when we actually leave that animal world, uh, we, we are not controlled by instinct, but we are controlled or should be by our um, reason, by reasoning things through and having a conscience knowing what's right and wrong. Uh, so that process of evolution, you know, pre-feudal uh, system, we can imagine um, people just acted uh, in, in their roles in, in very robotic ways and traditional ways. But as we became individuals, um, as we became freer from that, uh, that life, uh, way, way of, of being together, um, then we had this freedom uh, and with that came reason and conscience. And so, uh, should act towards one another in a spirit of brotherhood. So it, it, it talks about a spirit of brotherhood, so there should be solidarity um, between us. Remember, these rights are individual rights, rights to be able to uh, express our personalities. Now, you do need uh, uh, an act of solidarity because it's not just about the individual, is it? It's about the other respecting my dignity and rights uh, and allowing me to express myself, uh, have uh, the life I want, um, marry who I want, get the job I want, etc., etc. So. Um, we do, we live in a community and it's, we're not just individuals. We also must uh, think of others. Now, then it continues, Article 2. Everyone is entitled to all the rights and freedoms set forth in this declaration without distinguished distinction of any kind, such as race, colour, sex, language, religion, political or other opinion, national or social origin, property, birth or other status. Furthermore, no distinction shall be made on the basis of the political jurisdictional or international status of the country or territory to which a person belongs, whether it be independent, trust or non-self-governing or under any other limitation of sovereignty. So, why does it... So this, this is about discrimination. This is about not discriminating and, and we must ask ourselves first of all why does it set out these character char categories like sex race color religion political opinion etc it it sets out those categories because those are the normal categories uh, with which we discriminate if if somebody maybe is from the left or somebody's uh, Muslim, normally we can put them into a certain uh, context. We judge them, we prejudge them because we don't know them. Uh, we imagine what we think Muslims are. And we think they are the same. So we're, that's prejudice. We're prejudging them. We've got to get to know them as individuals, not... Uh, judge them on the basis of their religion or any other category. So that that is uh, quite clear. We can't discriminate. Um, now, why? Why not? 
why not discriminate? Well, obviously, because it's not fair. It's not fair on the on on the person who's being discriminated against. Um, but also on the basis that that person we're discriminating against is uh, probably someone who is not able to contribute their full potential. That person who is being discriminated against may in fact be a, a, have a great potential as a scientist or maybe uh, as a judge or a president. You know, and by discriminating, we are really not just wasting that person uh, for themselves, but wasting that resource, that human resource for society. So we really need to be inclusive and non-discrimination, non-discriminating anyway. Um, I always think about the blacks in America when finally they had more uh, rights and recognition and opportunities uh, we suddenly could see that they became uh, fantastic in music you got rap jazz blues uh, all the different types of music um, also in athletics you know black runners boxers all types of athletics in the army they filled up the army um, they even had a black president so uh, this really means by allowing uh, everyone to reach their full potential, it allows our society to reach its full potential. This is particularly important also for women. We see women, uh, the discrimination against women in Afghanistan is a particular break on the Afghanistan uh, progress. Uh, they don't allow their girls to go to school or uh, their women to work and that's half the country isn't it so um, you know by allowing uh, difference diversity in and by being inclusive it can really enrich the system because diversity you know means that it will have different qualities to contribute to the system uh, whether it's an economic system or a political system you know another point of view for example um, or a social system you know uh, so it's very important it's very important for <coughs> this this article to be upheld not just because it's right but also for the progress of, of a country. Um, we do have a tendency to want conformity in our societies. Uh, you find the, the, the most insecure people want for conformity and tradition and don't want this evolution of identity and tradition which can come from a, a lot of immigration for example America now is not uh, is a minority white country and the majority is not white um, and that can make people feel very insecure but um, the real progress we've seen in America yeah, the basis of that progress is its inclusivity to diversity and that's what creates uh, that's what really makes uh, Americans so creative. They're, they have so much diversity. They are so enriched. And that comes from non-discrimination.